G'day guys, we've got an application of differentiation question here today, more specifically an incremental formula question where we're going to be looking at percentage error. Just on a bit of a side note, um, this is my 200th video, so big ups to myself, shout out myself, you know, chuck 200 videos up here, so I think that's a decent effort, pat on the back. So we're going to try and get through this video as quickly as possible because it's starting to heat up where I am and I really want to go for a skateboard. So what have we got today? A curve is an equation y equals x to the power of n, where n is a rational number. As x increases by delta x, the corresponding increase in y is delta y. All right, no problem. Use the incremental formula to show that if x changes by k percent, then y changes by n times k percent. Now, I think I've seen this question before, to be perfectly honest, in an exam, but let's have a dig at it. So, if this was me in an exam, what I'd first do is I'd write down, it says use increment the incremental formula. So I'm going to write down the incremental formula. So what we're going to say is that for small changes in x, that for small changes, now it's good to get into a habit of, um, rather than jump straight into the question, you Right, you check the question that they've asked you to do and you start by putting down what you feel like you're going to have, like it says use the incremental formula. So we're going to have to describe the incremental formula first. This is a way that you can make sure that if we cock this up during the exam, because, you know, accidents happen, we're still going to be getting marks. The teacher is not going to put a whole line through our page and go zero. So we've got for small changes in x, comma, dy or delta y over delta x can be approximated by dy over dx evaluated at some point x equals a. So that's the original point. Okay, so that's what our incremental formula states. Now let's um, use this then, now we're going to get into tackling the question. So, I'm going to then rearrange this, so I'm going to have delta y is going to be, can be approximated by dy over dx times delta x. Now this has to be evaluated, let's not get ahead of ourselves, where x is equal to a. All right, so what we're going to do now, so here we have our incremental formula which relates the um, small change in y to the small change in x, or this is our approximation. So what we're going to do is we're looking to figure out what the percentage change in y is. So this percentage change in y is referred to as delta y over y. So that's something that you guys are going to have to sort of commit to memory. So when we do this, so we're going to go to get this form of on the y side, we're going to have to divide both sides of our relationship by y. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go, well, delta y over y is equal to dy dx evaluated when x is equal to a times delta x over y. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start subbing in the things that we know. So first of all, we have y is going to be equal to x to the power of n. So dy over dx, we have to differentiate this, is going to be nx to the n take 1. Now, I'm hoping you guys are fairly familiar with just, um, you know, the mechanics of differentiation. So, if that's our formula, that's our differential. So, let's sub these two things into our formula. So, we have delta y over y. is equal to the derivative of y with respect to x, which is this thing, times delta x over y, which is x to the power of n. Cool. 
So the rest of this formula is the rest of this formula. The rest of this question is basically algebra. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as n times x to the n times x to the negative 1 using an uh, index law times delta x all divided by x to the n. And because we just have multiplication at the top, we can then use this to cancel out our x to the n's. Now, if we had an addition or subtraction sign up in the numerator, we wouldn't be able to just randomly cancel stuff out like that. So, what are we left with? We're left with n times x to the negative 1 times delta x. Now this, is the, this x to the negative 1 is going to put it into the denominator. So we, this is going to be equal to n times delta x over x. Now, running out of space here, but carry on. Now, so this is going to be equal to n, we'll put that out the front, times delta x over x. Now, it says here in the question that if x changes by k percent, well, delta x over x is the percentage change in x. So this is going to be equal to just n times k percent, which is what they're asking for. So now that we're done with part A, let's get straight on to part B. So show you how you can use your result in A to calculate the percentage error in calculating the volume of a cube if the instrument for measuring the side has an error of 2%. Okay. So, first of all, volume of a cube with side length, we'll call, obviously we'll call it x. So the volume of a cube is equal to x to the power of 3. Cool. So, we know that we've got this relationship here. We're looking for the percentage error in calculating the volume. So the percentage error in calculating the volume will be represented by delta V over V. Now we know from part A that delta V over V is going to be equal to N times the percentage error in the measurement, which is in this case 2%. Now, we try. We can trawl back up to the top and figure out well, where is n in our equation. Well, n is the power. In this case, the power is 3. So we can say, therefore, delta v over v is going to be equal to 3 times 2%, which is equal to 6%. So from there... So then you, you can literally, if you feel like it, if you want to um, sort of ensure that your teacher understands that you have fully worked out the question, you can say, hence, the percentage error in the measurement of the volume is 6%, full stop. And that's all she wrote. Let's go back through what we've done. First of all, you, we were asked to use the incremental formula. So first of all, what I autom automatically do now is I'll literally, if it says use something, use differentiation, use integration, use, I don't know, three apples and two oranges, I'm always going to write down what they're asking me to use. So here it says use the incremental formula. So what I'm doing is I write down the incremental formula. We then rearranged it to make it y in, delta y in terms of delta x. And then what we did is we divided both sides by y so we could get the percentage change or the percentage error in y and, how, and we were going to use algebra to find out how that related to the percentage error in x. So what we did is we then found what y was equal to. We found what um, the derivative of y was equal to with respect to x. 
we substituted that into our relationship that we found over here, and we're able to use algebra to come out with a very simple relationship that the percentage error in Y was equal to N times the percentage error in X. And that's all we had to do for part A. Now, but if this was in an exam, I imagine most of the marks would be allocated to part A. For part B, once you've got part A under control, we literally write down what the volume of a cube is equal to. We then write down our relationship between volume and how it relates to this function here. We've got n times the 2% error in the measuring of the side length. Then we substituted in what we found n to be, which was 3 in this case. And then we found that the percentage error in the volume would be 6%. Then what I do is if I'm not time pressured in an exam, if I'm not if I'm not feeling like I'm going to run out of time, I'll then write a little sentence to explain to the teacher that, hey, I know exactly what I'm talking about. So hope this video helped, guys. Um, specifically, I hope you um, understand how I went through the part A. If you don't, if you need any clarification, just leave a message in the message bar, and I'll be happy to clarify anything that I've done in part A to you. But until next time, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and I'll um, see you again next time.